The film begins in Paris, with a professional killer monitoring the hotel where the person he has wanted to kill lives. The killer was in an apartment across from this person's hotel room. The killer starts his day practicing yoga and listening to music. After that, he goes to buy food and calls attorney Hodges, who asks him to carry out the mission. The killer tells the lawyer that for five days he has been waiting for the person they want to kill, but he has not come yet. He told him that he seemed bored and would wait another day, and if the person did not come, he would cancel the mission. After that, the killer breaks the phone and throws it in the street. The killer is a professional in his work because he pays attention to the smallest details of his work and leaves no trace. After that, the killer returns to his apartment to complete his mission. At night, the wanted man, who is clearly a businessman, arrives. The killer prepares and prepares his sniper weapon. He points a gun at the room where the man is. The businessman was with a girl. The killer was very careful in determining his target, but the killer missed his target and killed the girl instead of the man. The killer is shocked by this and tries to leave the place quickly so that the businessman's guards do not find him. He then steals a motorcycle and flees with it through the streets of Paris. After that, he goes to a gas station and uses the bathroom to change his clothes. He also shaves his beard and wears new clothes so as not to be recognized. Then he heads to the airport to leave France. At the airport, he called the lawyer. He told him what happened. The lawyer got angry and told him that he would cause him a very big problem with the client who assigned him the task. But the killer turns off the phone, then breaks the phone and gets rid of it. The killer uses a fake passport and books a plane ticket. While he was booking the ticket, he noticed that there was a person at the ticket office next to him. He felt suspicious of him and felt that this person was watching him. After he booked the ticket, he saw the same person in the waiting hall. He decided not to get on the plane, so he booked a room at the airport hotel to leave the next day. In his room, he places a cup on the door handle, and at the bottom is the bowl in which they brought him food. He did this to know if the room was broken into. After that, he sat down and was holding a knife and placed it next to him, ready in case he was attacked. The next day, he boarded the plane back to his country. Once he arrived, he got into his car and headed to his house in the forest. After he reaches his house, he notices footprints. He takes out his gun and follows the footprints until he enters the house. He found traces of blood everywhere. After that, he goes to the hospital and meets a person named Marcus, who is the brother of his fiancée Magdala, who was present at the killer's house while he was traveling. She suffered very serious injuries and is in intensive care. Marcus tells the killer that his sister was attacked and that he was able to see the two people who attacked her while they were escaping the house. He told him that they were a man and a girl. He described them to him. He told him that the man was huge and the girl had white hair. He also told him that they left the place by taking a green taxi that was waiting for them in front of the house. The killer promised him that he would take revenge on them. He stayed with his fiance in the hospital. The doctor came to him and told him that his fiance's condition was improving. Magdala wakes up and tells the killer what happened. She tells him that the two people who came to the house wanted to kill him. They tried to find out where he was, but she refused. So they attacked her and tried to kill her, but she resisted them and stabbed the big man in the leg. He asked her to rest, then he returned to his house and dug a large hole in his garden. There was a large safe containing a large collection of weapons, fake passports, and phones. The next day, he collects his things and puts them in his bag. Then, he goes to the city and he starts looking for green taxis. He was able to find a large number of green cars, and he knew the name of the company for these cars. At night, he was heading to the headquarters of the taxi company. He was able to trick the guard and make him open the company's door. The killer breaks into the place and then enters the company's database. Through the trip log, he is able to determine the number of the taxi that was in front of his house on the day of the accident. Then he extracts all the files of the drivers in the company. He discovers that the driver who was in front of his house is called Leo, who is usually located near the airport. The next day, the killer goes to the airport and meets Leo for a ride in the car. The killer takes out his weapon and threatens Leo, then asks him to tell him about the people he took with him to his house in the forest. Leo told him that he was near the airport, and a huge man came to him with an older girl with white hair. They asked him to take them to the address on the GPS. He took them there, and they asked him to wait for them to return to the airport. He told him that they stayed at the house for about an hour, and then they returned to him, and he took them to the airport. After Leo finishes speaking, the killer kills him. The killer discovers that behind all this is the lawyer Hodges, and that he sent his killers to get rid of him because of his failure in the mission. So the killer decides to travel to the state of Louisiana in America. There, he rents a car and also buys certain equipment. After that, he disguises himself as a cleaner and enters the office of the lawyer Hodges without anyone noticing him. The killer breaks into Secretary Dolores' office and then enters the lawyer's office. At gunpoint, he asked her to handcuff him 
and then asked her to handcuff herself in the bathroom. The killer takes out a nail-firing gun. He hits the lawyer with three nails in the chest. He tells him that in a few minutes, he will die, and that he must tell him the names of the killers he sent to his house. If he did that, he would call an ambulance and save him. But the killer was surprised that the lawyer died without telling him anything. The secretary is shocked by this. She tells him that she knows that he will kill her, and that after he kills her, he will hide her body. So she asked him to make her death appear as if it was the result of a robbery. She asked for this so that her children would find her body so that they could benefit from the amount of her life insurance. In return, she will help him find the two people the lawyer sent. The killer agrees, places Hodge's body in the container, and leaves the scene with Secretary Dolores. When he went to her house, he discovered that she had copies of all the files in Hodge's office. The killer discovered that the person who attacked his house was called the monster and that he lived in Florida, and that the girl with him was called the expert and that she lived in New York. He also discovered that the person who assigned Hodges the task of killing the businessman in Paris was a billionaire named The Client who lives in Chicago. After the killer takes this information, he kills Dolores in her home without hiding her body. Then he goes to a place, disposes of Hodges's body, cleans the car, changes the fake number plate, and then returns the car to the company. The next day, the killer uses a fake ID card and rents a car. He drives to Florida to take revenge on the monster. After the killer arrives in Florida, he heads to the monster's address. He saw it with two of his friends. He noticed that the monster had a ferocious dog, so the killer bought sleeping pills, meat, and a bottle of wine. Then he returned to watch the monster's house all day. At night, he saw the monster bidding farewell to his friends, meaning the monster would be alone in the house. So the killer begins his mission. He throws the piece of meat in which he put the sleeping pills to the dog. After that, he waits until the dog falls asleep. Then he sneaks into the monster's house. At home, the monster attacks the killer and a fierce fight ensues between them. The killer was able to stab the monster in the leg, so the monster hits him with full force. Then the monster takes out his weapon to kill him, but the killer quickly hides. The killer was able to lure the monster and kill him in the bathroom. The dog wakes up and runs to the monster, then he runs after the killer, but the killer manages to escape from the house. Then the killer takes out the bottle of alcohol from which he made the Molotov bomb and throws it into the house. The next day, the killer travels to New York to kill the expert. After he arrived, he went to a car rental company and rented a car under a fake identity. Then he went to the expert's house and monitored the house. At night, he watched the expert get into her car and leave the house. So he follows her until she reaches a restaurant. He entered the restaurant and sat in front of her. She recognized him and knew that he wanted to kill her. She asked him to let her finish her dinner first, and he agreed to that. After she finished dinner, the killer took her to a deserted place. She pretends that she lost her balance and falls to the ground. She asked him to help her stand up, but the killer shot and killed her. He discovered that she was holding a knife to kill him. After that, the killer leaves for Chicago to kill the billionaire called The Client. The killer believes that The Client is the reason for everything that happens because he is the one who assigned the lawyer to this task and that he is also behind the mission of sending the killers to his house. The killer is monitoring the billionaire's house. He saw him as he was leaving. Then the killer goes to the building, but he finds that the door is closed with advanced locks. So he photographs the lock and searches for it on the internet. After that, he buys a device to copy the keys for the lock. Then he continues to monitor the client. He knew that the client was exercising in the gym located in one of the city's hotels. So he books a hotel room under a fake identity. The next day, the killer goes to the gym. He manages to steal the keys to the safes in the gym. He enters there and steals the private key to the building in which the client lives in order to make a copy of it using the device he purchased. At night, the client was in his apartment but was shocked to find the killer in front of him. The client was shocked by the killer's ability to breach all security precautions. The client thought that the killer was someone who wanted to rob him, but the killer told him his identity. So the client told him that he had no personal problem with him, and that Hodges was the one who suggested getting rid of anyone related to this mission that happened in Paris. The killer also discovered that Hodges took extra money for this, so the killer became certain that the client had nothing to do with it. He decided to leave him and not kill him, but he told him that if he tried to kill him, he would come back to kill him. After that, the killer returns to his country and we see him at his home with his fiancée. He was spending happy time with his fiancée after he decided to retire from his profession. 